Okay, and here we are, uh, Wednesday, the 2nd of March, White Plains City School District Reopening Committee meeting, approaching two years of this committee's uh, uh, service to our school district and, and our school community. And I do want to first and foremost thank um, everybody in our community. Today is a, is a big day all throughout New York State. Um, I personally just returned uh, from some of our schools, uh, and I'm happy to report to you um, that the vast, let me say it with this way, the feeling in, in our schools is, is very positive. Um, some, some of you may have questions uh, related to, you know, how many folks are wearing masks, how many folks aren't wearing masks. I can tell you, you know, kind of eyeballing um, probably, you know, 50-50. Uh, and, and that's sort of, uh, sort of what we expected. Um, and it is great, no matter what decision our children or our team members make, we are supportive of that. I wanna thank all of our classroom teachers, all of our support staff members, all of our administrators um, for continuing to send the message that um, de dependent upon your personal circumstances and what, what you need, uh, you should feel comfortable both wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, um, deciding which day you feel like wearing a mask, in what type of a situation or scenario you may or may not wear a mask, and that there is no room in our school district uh, for anybody uh, being made to feel uncomfortable about any of their decisions. And that is really important uh, to us. I can tell you, seeing the children interacting, you know, you're walking in groups at the high school, um, half of the group is wearing masks, half of the group isn't wearing masks. And that's exactly what I would expect to see in White Plains. Um, kids really just coming together, supporting each other, regardless of, of where they're at, and what their decisions are. And you know what, we talked to a few students and they said, uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep wearing my mask because I wanna take care of or look after a family member or I'm gonna be going away in a few days and I wanna make sure um, that I'm taking all the steps I can take to keep myself healthy. And that's great. Um, so big day, uh, mask optional, and that means mask optional everywhere. Now for the reopening committee, I did put in uh, your in, uh, invitation, both the updated guidance, which of course we got last night after 7 p.m., uh, and, but we're, we're grateful to have it. Uh, and uh, the FAQs, which are really helpful too to go through. The good news is this, there really aren't any major, actually there are no major surprises for White Plains. Uh, you know, what is required um, is in place in White Plains, what is recommended is in place in White Plains. Um, and, you know, the big, the big adjustment for us today, really the, the only adjustment for us today um, in, in a major capacity is, is the mask mandate. So from that perspective, um, you know, we're, we're uh, really in solid, solid shape, solid position. Um, we are still uh, following um, health and safety uh, uh, standards in our in our buildings, and and uh, we are still working to keep everybody uh, well. You know, uh, the the illness isn't gone, uh, but certainly this, as I've been saying, is a real bright spot on the timeline over the last two years of contending with COVID nineteen, not only in our schools but in our communities. Our numbers are really really low, um, and that's great. Hopefully, they continue to uh, stay low. It will never be zero. We know that. Um, but uh, at, at this moment in time right now, and from, from all the indications that we're seeing, we're in, we're in a very, very good position. Um, so I want to thank uh, everybody again, and I want to thank our Board of Education uh, for continuously holding the torch and leading the way. Uh, Rosemary, I always like to start with, uh, with you and, and Cheryl, uh, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or, or concerns. Yeah, on behalf of the board, um, I'm going to speak for us, Cheryl. I think we're just looking forward to the comments and the feedback from all those on the line. Um, you know, interested to hear, you know, from Maggie and Dr. Longobardi and just what everyone has to say. But thank you. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Ricca. You bet. Thanks so much. Uh, and yes, and let us move right to Dr. Longobardi. Doc, I know you're very busy. You have a lot going on. Tell us what you're seeing in the uh, pediatrician office. Hi, good morning. Hope everyone had a nice break. Um, yeah, we certainly are the numbers in our office reflect the community numbers. We're not seeing we're not seeing much COVID. Um, the the masking is the masking optional is creating a million phone calls, as you might imagine, people um, just wanting to know what they should do. And you know, the AAP has 
has come out with, you know, just having discussions with the families about about their individual, you know, risk factors and how and how they feel about it. And also the importance of being flexible and being able to go back to masking when the metrics indicate that that's needed. So as long as people understand that, and there are certain situations which are outlined in the guidelines where there it's not mask optional, you know, if you're exposed, et cetera. So someplace, sometimes you still need to wear a mask. Yeah, Dr. Longobardi. So then the AAP is in full agreement with, um, you know, currently, you know, mask optional and everything like that. It seems so, yes. They're saying hey, just have discussions with families about risk. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Longobardi. And we, we will talk, uh, we will talk about um, the requirements to once again mask. Those are for folks who are, are uh, exposed. Um, and uh, we'll, Maggie will we'll touch on that a little bit. And just so you know, no one needs to take notes. And if you're watching this later on, you don't need to take notes. We're gonna send all this information out to everybody. And as always, we'll continue to communicate um, any changes or, or any concerns. Uh, I do see uh, Ms. Marino, how you doing? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much. I truly support that every family has to make their own decision. I just wanted to make sure we were aware um, through the UPK system, they aren't necessarily following the guidelines that uh, White Plains School District has put in place. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know it's they have funding through the White Plains School District, but my understanding is they're allowed to make their own individual decisions about mask optional. Is that accurate? No. Um, well, so late last night, again, so, you know, it's nine, it's nine yeah, or so no. in the morning. So I anticipate that there are going to be some changes and maybe some people, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get information later on, but pre-K programs and childcare programs have also been moved to mask optional. Now, if you're a private okay. provider, um, you know, you, you, as always, are able to make uh, decisions about your school, but uh, in terms of our UPK program, that's a mask optional environment as well. Okay, thank you, because I know they're housed in other, in, in other facilities, right? So my daughter is in UPK and they were told it was not optional, so... Yeah, and we're, we're also aware that, you know, as some students got on buses this morning and some bus drivers said, hey, you need to put a mask on. I, I anticipate this is all sort of part of the first day experience. Yes. Yeah, um, and, and folks will, uh, you know, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll under, the understanding will, will be spread as the hours pass, I think. Okay, but Joe, Joe, this is Cheryl. I mean, to, to your point, um, so if the, the pre-K program that we have is a classroom in a facility that is requiring masks, how does that, <laughs> how do the two intersect? Right, because are, are all the other kids required or anyone who's coming into their building required to wear a mask? So how do we, uh, how do we navigate that? So if, if a, a pre-K program is housed in a building where masks are required um, or this particular private facility is requiring masks, then that pre-K program, we would have to look at that specifically. Um, but in the facility, you would follow whatever the facility standards are. Uh, again, you know, mask mandates throughout the state of New York have all been dropped, right? So this, except for healthcare settings uh, and, and, and some other uh, unique situations like that. Uh, but yeah, Cheryl, like, you know, we, I would have to see the actual situation, but you would expect that if, uh, if, if a program is in a building that has requirements for the entire building, that that would probably transcend into that Class. Right, but that, that I think is maybe the genesis of the question here. Correct. So I'll tell you the yeah. YWCA is requiring yeah. masks where the other what you, you, P, the other UK, PK programs do not. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have to check in with the YWCA. YWCA. Okay. Uh, can Thank I interrupt you. for a second? Um, the W, the YWCA also ha houses kids that are younger. Um, you know, so they 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 have from from, from babies up. So they may um, have other rules that they have to follow um, be, be, because they're a child care center. The child care center said it's optional. And they're choosing it for their own political and emotional reasons to. So I would say we would have to look. Um, yep. As I mentioned, we're, we're about three hours into. into no, the, I understand. But since they're funded by the they're funded by the school district and they're funded by taxpayers. So I just want to make sure we, I, mean, I, have a, I have a kid in UPK and a, and a child in second grade and the second grader got on with no mask and the UPK had to. And you, you can understand this conflict at home because, you know, they want to be like each other. 
and they're all under the same system of White Plains School District. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention if you were not aware of it. No, thank you. I wasn't. Thank you. We'll definitely check in with them though today. Okay, there were, are a couple of members of our committee who are unable to attend, but had asked uh, that we, we ask a few questions of the committee. I'm gonna do that. Um, some of these questions that I'm going to read aloud are I'll be able to answer because they are answered in the guidance. Um, so uh, I, I just wanna make sure that um, you, you understand what I'm doing. I'm not just kind of firing questions at you. Um, the first question was uh, why we moved in this direction until we receive more guidance, wouldn't it be prudent to wait? Uh, we did receive the guidance. The guidance was distributed last night and we are, uh, we're in line with everything that needs to, to be um, re uh, required to be followed. Um, why are we removing masks on buses? There's no ability to distance. Additionally, how will children who have been exposed to COVID and who are in our test to stay program and riding buses be handled? Um, that, that's a great question. Test to stay program um, or ex and or exposure still require an individual to wear a mask. So those folks who were involved in an exposure would still be wearing a mask. Uh, a mask. The mandate for transportation, pupil transportation, was part of the state mandate, which is why it becomes optional on school buses as well. What protective uh, measures will remain in place for our children? Um, many uh, will continue to remain in place. In fact, you're not going to hear um, that we're making any changes right now, um, dr dramatic changes to anything other than obviously the, the mask mandate is, is shifted. Uh, will barriers still be in place in lunchrooms? So barriers are not required and they haven't been required. Uh, we have kept barriers um, a, as a, an additional layer of mitigation, but they are coming down um, and they will be coming down in, in our class. Again, we're not ripping them out today, um, but they will be coming down. Uh, and of course, if there are situations where children are concerned about, you know, proximity or anything like that, we're, we're going to be there to help them as well. Uh, but it's important to note, and the guidance is really clear on this, that it's, it, the question is like, are barriers required? It just says no. Um, and that, that is a holdover also from, from last year. Um, will eating be permitted in classrooms? Yes, uh, children do eat in classrooms uh, from time to time. And uh, that, that has always been the case. Um, can we increase testing at schools? So testing at schools uh, and the opportunity for testing remains, and we're going to continue uh, with the opportunity for testing. Um, Maggie Resiopo and, and our team uh, are, you know, on point in terms of access to testing, both surveillance, uh, rapid PCR, uh, and also test to stay. So testing um, is still is still around. How is contact tracing impacted? Will these efforts be increased? So contact tracing, again, um, the requirement for contact tracing fell away uh, a couple of iterations of guidance ago. We have continued to contact trace based on potential exposure. We'll continue to do that. We'll continue to reach out to families and let them know if their child was in a situation where they have uh, potentially been exposed to COVID-19 as we have in the past, that's important. And remember, we, there are other communicable illnesses that we, we notified uh, families about potential exposure as well. Uh, I think that COVID-19 will probably end up in that bucket, um, you know, like pertussis and, and, uh, and some others, um, and, and we'll continue to, to notify our parents and guardians. Um, will, we, will we continue test to stay? We will. Um, uh, what percentage of our children are vaccinated uh, at each school level? That we don't know. Um, there's no requirement uh, or mechanism really for the identification of students who have been vaccinated for COVID-19. Moms and dads and guardians tell us, um, you know, uh, there are some instances where in order for a child to participate in an athletic event, for instance, if you're running at the armory, the armory was requiring that all, all folks who go there are vaccinated. And then we know, um, you know, that a kid's vaccinated. But uh, those vaccination requirements, again, throughout the state of New York are likely going to be falling away as well. Um, we know that in, in, in many areas, we, we've heard Mayor Adams talking about this in New York City, um, and even heard uh, President Biden talking about it last night, that those, those changes are really coming. And they're, uh, they're connected to the much, first of all, they're connected to the high vaccination rate, um, first and foremost, but they're also um, connected to the low transmission and um, spread at this time. Uh, initially, mask removal was potentially 
to be tied to level of vaccinated children, what happened to this approach. I don't know that there was ever a connection to vaccination and, and mask removal. I do remember a, a moment in time where the governor made a statement during a press conference that they were looking at vaccination rates uh, at, before they changed the mask mandate. Maybe that's what uh, the questioner is remembering, um, but I don't ever recall there being a direct sort of, uh, you know, that, that vaccination rate was gonna then de determine when masks became optional. Um, should our COVID number spike, at what level would masks be reintroduced? So that's a great question. And, and there is, there, there is a, uh, a gradient, there is a formula that, that the counties will be using. Um, and, and of course, that you can you can see this through CDC. Um, counties will be using this uh, mechanism to determine whether or not they're in a green, yellow, or a red scenario. And we start to see numbers spiking again in our region. We will take the appropriate action, um, and that is something that is really important for everybody to know. We do have the ability to do that. Um, we're not, you know, packing up all of all of our supplies. We're ready uh, to move if we need to. Um, and for the time, the time being, we're going to be cautiously optimistic, particularly as we're moving into hopefully the warmer months and, and sunnier weather soon. Um, what does this mean for parents visiting the school, i.e. for shows? Can masks be required for families visiting? Uh, so our, our belief is uh, when folks are going to be visiting and uh, folks are going to be coming to, to our schools, it will be just like it is uh, during the course of the school day. Masks are going to be optional. Certainly anybody who is um, who wants to wear a mask absolutely should feel that, that that's what they're going to do. Um, but for folks who are not, they're, they're uh, going to choose not to. Um, the AAP rec recommendation still recommends masking unless all measures are met, including vaccination percentages and proper ventilation. Do we currently meet ventilation requirements? Uh, fortunately, we do. Uh, and we have. And, and again, thanks to Frank and, and a lot of really heavy, heavy work way back in um, 2020, right? Uh, 2020, our ventilation um, is, is where it needs to be. And as you know, we're also um, capitalizing and utilizing our American Rescue Plan funding, um, as well as other funding sources to improve ventilation all throughout the district. And that is above and beyond um, the requisite you know, requirement. This is gonna be better. Um, that's the steps, those are the steps that we're taking. Has our plan been approved by the Westchester County Department of Health? Yeah, um, it, it absolutely. I met with the, the you know the team yesterday. We all discussed, or rather Monday, sorry. We all discussed the the impending guidance shift, and um, the County of, of Westchester is um, arm in arm and shoulder to shoulder with all of our school districts. Uh, and are we still requiring re weekly testing of unvaccinated teachers? And is this also a requirement of substitutes? So. Uh, we are still testing. Um, it is unclear at the moment if there is going to be a shift or, you know, when that shift is going to take place with regard to the, the, the requirements. Here's the other thing I can tell you. That's a very, very, very small number of folks in our school district. We have an extraordinarily high vaccination rate uh, for faculty and staff members all throughout the school district. So those were um, all of the questions that, that were asked. There was another set of uh, questions related to masking in health services. Maggie, do you want to talk just a little bit about health services and that wellness area approach? Um, and then also any updates that, that you might have as well. Hi, everyone. Um, our nursing offices are considered a medical fa fa facility. So the nurses and the health aides will still have to be masked. Um, because we, we see all the sick kids in the, in the district. So when a child comes into the nurse's office, if the child is sick, has cold, cough, or any kind of COVID symptoms, we will ask them to wear a mask and we will put them in that isolation room until we can further assess them and make sure that they're okay or that they're safe or that they need to, to go home. So, and the nurses are very versed in actually triaging. So as soon as we, we see a child, we're already triaging them. Are they sick? Is it just a stomach ache because they didn't eat lunch? Is it a headache because they were seeing the, the computer screen all, all day long? Um, and I'm gonna have a nursing meet, meet, meeting to, tomorrow to discuss all of this in de detail with my nurses, but they all know that they must wear masks and we are still gonna have that isolation room. We're still gonna have all of our mitigation 
um, strategies in place um, so that we can keep it safe. You know, and I'm also thinking out of the, the, the box, you know, with transportation. Um, we had asked Sir, Sergio to let the buses know, please open the windows. We want to make sure that ventilation is of utmost importance. Um, we are cautiously optimistic. We want to make sure that we all have the freedom not to wear a mask and the freedom to wear a mask if we're uncomfortable, but also to be very care careful so that we don't have a surge and so that we don't have to go back to where things were. And I got to tell you, this morning I walked the high school and I saw about 60 to 70 per percent of the kids or even more um, wear wearing their, their masks by choice. So it just gives you an indication as to, you know, what the kids are about. They're wonderful. And I'm so, so very proud of them. If there's any questions, please uh, let me know. I'm more than ha happy to answer them. And remember, my office, and I have to say this before I, I for, forget, is a wellness office. It's not a health office. So kids come for water. They come if they have anxiety and they need to, to use their strategies to feel better prior to you know, going back to class. They come if they're hungry. So um, that is what the office is, is about. It's not only about sick kids that come in every day. It's about um, keeping the kids well enough so that they can learn. And that I think is the biggest, utmost, most important thing in our district is to have those kids feeling well enough to learn. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie. And sometimes they just need a hug and they go see their school nurse for a hug. And by the way, sometimes the adults need, need a, a hug too. <laughs> you guys have been tremendous, Maggie. Um, and, you know, for all of our school nurses um, and, and nurse aides and everybody who's been um, out there every day, uh, you know, Dr. Longabardi, you, you guys are amazing and you've been amazing and, and um, we couldn't have been, we couldn't have gotten to where we are today without, without all of your help. So thanks, Maggie. Anybody have any questions for Maggie? All right, Maggie's getting off easy today. Okay, uh, I do want to just go around the room real quick as we normally do. Um, let me start with Mr. Pepper. Good morning, Scott. Uh, good morning, Dr. Rector. Good morning, everyone. I have nothing of significance to report other than um, our employee attendance numbers are certainly much better than they've been in a long time. So we're, we're grateful for that. And again, very appreciative to our administrators at the building level who have done a great job of managing those absences that we've had. So thank you for that. Thanks, Scott. Anybody have any questions for HR? All right. Dr. Kawatish, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, nothing to report. Exactly what you said, Dr. Ricker, that we continually work with the bus company and just reiterate um, that masks are optional on the buses and, you know, prevent that mixed messages happening. Thanks, Ann. Anybody have any questions for Ann? All right, uh, Dr. Hand, morning, Debbie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy almost spring. It's nice to see the sun out and it to be a little bit warmer. Uh, we already reached out to the pre-K providers, so I'll share that information as soon as I can. So thank you, Ms. Marina, for bringing that question up. Um, you know, we sent an email as soon as you asked and then they'll all get back to us and we'll make sure that there's consistency across and they're doing what they need to do. And uh, these two weeks are parent-teacher conferences down at the elementary level. And that's pretty much it. I figure that the principals are going to want to know what we're doing with, um, with parent events and concerts. I know that Gary West had mentioned, are we having our spring concerts in person? Are we starting to bring our parents back for you know, the various parent engagement events that we have, especially in the springtime? So if we don't have those answers right now, I think that we need to um, you know, start to communicate some information on that. Great, thanks, Debbie. Any questions for Dr. Han? Yeah, and all of that information, especially for folks who are watching later, all that information related to springtime events and the year culminating activities 
All that will be coming. We are absolutely anticipating that we will be in person. Um, of course, we're gonna to continue to leverage things like Zoom uh, to, to, uh, to provide additional access and opportunity for parents and guardians who maybe don't work nine to five and uh, you know aren't able to get to uh, some, of, some of these great events, but we still wanna be able to see them. So we've learned a lot over the last two years and we wanna to continue to leverage um, those kinds of tools uh, to continue to provide uh, additional access. So thank you, Debbie. Um, here is Miss Al Miss Algarden. Good morning, Deb. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I just echo my colleagues' sentiments. Uh, thanks to the buildings. Thanks to the community. And it feels good. It feels like spring is coming, and there's a little rebirth. We don't have any additional updates from pupil services. Thanks, Deb. Anybody have any questions for Deb? All right, my partners, um, the presidents. Uh, Carol Lyons, and I got to embarrass, well, I don't think it's embarrassing. She probably will. Um, Ms. Lyons was actually just selected to be one of the vice presidents. Am I speaking out of turn, Carol? Okay. Was selected to be one of the vice presidents of NICE at Carol. Congratulations. Hi there. I just wanted to take a quick second. It feels like a long time since we've publicly or I've publicly thanked Nurse Maggie. So I just want to, again, like every every pivot, we know that the journey is not over, but today does feel like a day full of hope. I know it's also a day of anxiety for some folks, but Maggie, thank you for holding everyone's hand along the way. Frank is gone because I wanted to thank him again publicly for putting in that infrastructure. And I also wanted to thank all the faculty and staff who have really filled in and, and, and made it happen while we were scrambling. And I wanna thank all of us because we're still here. We're still here. We'll probably be here again in two more weeks, but I just wanted to recognize how far we've come. And although the journey is not over, it, it's a good day to be here together. Thank you. Thanks, Kara. Uh, where is, there she is, Ms. Herzenberg. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have to echo the same sentiments of being thankful, especially to the CSEA staff who have been so flexible through this and pitching in wherever they needed to. The nursing staff have been amazing. And obviously, thank you to all of you for your consideration and your help in this journey. Thanks, Adele. You know, Reagan Figueroa is, is not here. Um, she is the president of the ASA, uh, but I, I would, Mr. Kronk, or, or did, did you wanna? Sure, uh, I mean, I think I'm just really gonna echo all the other sentiments. We're thankful um, for all of our colleagues throughout the district, as well as all the parents and families in the community um, it's been a super challenging last couple of years, but through cooperation and grace and understanding, you know, it's nice to arrive where we are today, even though we know there's still uh, still a, a lot of progress to be made. So thanks, and I hope everybody's well. Thanks, Doug. This is how things work behind the scenes so that, you know, Liza Torres just reached out to me. She said, I think Suzanne Lasser had her hand up. I think Suzanne was clapping. Did you have your hand up or you clap? Uh... I was clapping before. See, that's how attentive Liza is. She's just telling, you know, you don't even see these messages coming up. Thanks, Liza. Uh, does anybody have any general questions, comments, or concerns about anything right now? As I mentioned, we are going to be sending out additional information into our community, breaking down the guidance. Nurse Maggie will be sending um, the steps for test to stay when you do have to wear a mask again, if you're a potential exposure. Um, all that stuff will be available. Um, but does anybody have any? Thanks, Ms. Bianni. Can I just thank um, Dawn, because I have to say, food service has been absolutely amazing. If you've ever gone to lunch, a lunchtime in the high school, you haven't lived. Okay. It is really an active, wonderful place with these great kids all over the place. But I can say that Dawn added these food carts that the kids can just go grab and and go food and and i have to say that it's been amazing an amazing experience just to see it so i just wanted to give a big shout shout out to dawn and the food service pe people that have really um improved our food lives 
you know, and I look forward to working with her next year um, to make a wellness uh, com co co committee for the food and for nutrition. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie. Dawn, you'll love this. I was over at Church Street this morning. I'm saying hi to the kiddos as they're coming off the bus. A little boy comes up. He says, hey, Dr. Rick, can I talk to you? I said, sure. Sure. What's going on? There needs to be more salt on the fries. I said, what? More salt on the fries. Okay. I said, I'll let Miss McGinn know. <laughs> okay. Look, it has been a long road. Uh, the mission is never accomplished. Um, you know, we have to be on target every single day. We have to watch what's happening in landscape every single day to support our kids and our community. There's no doubt about that. However, this is a big day. It's a good day for us. It's a good day for New York. It's a good day for America. Uh, we are really coming out on a different place right now. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be another variant. It doesn't mean we might not have to take steps again to mitigate um, the spread of illness. But we must grab on and enjoy these victories because they don't happen by accident. It happens because we work together. Um, and so for everybody watching this later on, thank you as well. Uh, I think White Plains has stood as a lighthouse, uh, as a larger school district in Westchester County um, for how to work together to navigate challenges where there are no directions. There haven't been books written, well, maybe some written too soon, but there, are, there, there isn't a playbook, right? And we were able to navigate that together. So again, thanks everybody. There'll be more to come. Um, remember the most important thing that we can all do right now is support each other, respect each other, and make sure if we're not feeling well, we are staying home. We're not going to work. We're not going to school, if we're not feeling well, we're monitoring how our wellness is so that we can take care of the rest of our community as well. Thank you very, very much, everybody. I hope you all have a great day. It's Dr. Seuss's birthday today, so make sure you read uh, one, of, one of those fabulous books. I know Ridgeway and all of our elementary schools are celebrating um, really cool stuff. Facebook Live on Friday, we'll go give updates to everybody again. Um, but uh, again, just, uh, just a, a big hearty thank you uh, and have a great day. Stay WP proud.